Hello there, folks. Good evening, and welcome back once again to Suzerain. <coughs> Just come back from football. My throat is a bit, uh, a bit donchy. Uh, but anyway, I thought I'd get dressed for the occasion. Put my tie on. Put my hat on. You know, my fedora hat. Clearly, <laughs> don't own one, of course. Uh, so you, you know, do rag is going to have to do. So yes, as we left off. Last time, oh dear me! Oh, hello, only how are you doing? Yeah, as we left off last time, we had ah uh... oh, no, you know it took, me, it took me ages. That's why I'm three minutes late. It's doing my hair, put my tie on, getting dressed up. I'm the, pre I'm the president for heaven's sake. Can't be looking like a. I could just roll out of bed, you know, with pyjamas on. <laughs> Hello, Catherine, welcome. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> as we left off last time, we managed to swing the growth line from the negative to the quite positive. We're still in a, quite a deficit, but hey, we were told to run a deficit, so that's what we've done. We've just followed the sage advice of our economy man, Mr. Gus Manger. And uh, we ended up with some, we, we went to a meeting, went to a meeting with all of the party leaders and their deputies and that was an absolute blast. Uh, we lost our temper once, banged on the table. And uh, now we have got a meeting with somebody who's been very quiet uh, since we first came into office and made a little deal with him. Uh, but it looks like uh, Mr. Coronti is going to cash in a favour perhaps and we're kind of duty bound to oblige so we'll see what's going to happen there and the crazy couldn't welcome 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 well you know these are the only burgundy slash maroon coloured things I've got so you know what I thought I'd put them on I mean can't you see the similarities I mean literally my camera is like just above the president there. I mean, you can see we look almost like identical twins. Goatee beards, same coloured headwear, kind of, you know, same coloured tie. Uh, how's my day been? My day has been uh, pretty decent. Did some horse racing, lost a pound. In the grand scheme of things, so uh, you know, break even day at best. And we just come out from football and one two one, so that was pretty decent. <coughs> On the way home, uh, <laughs> got slowed down by uh, a crane that was being shipped or, or driven about with a police escort. So that was a bugger. It took me uh, an extra fifteen minutes longer to get home than usual because I was stuck behind the damn thing. But uh, apart from that, it's been a very quiet day, as you would imagine. Uh, recovering after yesterday's affairs, uh, which actually didn't take me that long. Uh, you know, I don't think I'd, I don't think I did too bad yesterday. I obviously had two. I think I had four drinks in total, right? I think I had four. And I'd had a, a, a meal before the stream, and I'd had a meal during the stream. So I, you know, it was quite. I think I was quite. Uh, Quite within my, my, my tolerance levels, without having to wake up with a severe hangover. So I woke up uh, and was, I was, I was, I was quite alright. Sausage and bacon sandwich brought me around pretty swiftly. Uh, I did actually debate having a, a final, a last hurrah uh, this evening, uh, but I thought better of it. I thought, no, do you know what? Because I'm going to start, I'm going to start my regime tomorrow properly. Back on my regime now. I've had a little bit of a lapse this past couple of weeks since I came back off, to, off uh, from Turkey. But now that I'm about um, <clears throat> just over a month away from going on holiday again, I thought now is a perfect time to get back on it for the next sort of five weeks. Five weeks of being really good now. So perhaps I thought, should I just have one last treat this evening? My bottle of Coke is still there. Taking all the bottles of alcohol down the, you know. T but then I thought, no. Uh, my milkshake, uh, no, I, I didn't have it last night because obviously I... Uh, I've not eaten my dinner uh, and had all that alcohol. So I don't really want a milkshake now. Uh, perhaps it was a mistake getting it. A bit gluttonous, perhaps. 
Uh, woke up this morning, it was in the fridge, um, and I mixed it around, I was like, ooh. I mean, it's been in the fridge, so it won't be off. So I had literally a couple of, sw a couple of sips through the straw, tastes delicious, consistency is a bit thinner than it usually is, because obviously all the ice cream is melted. Uh, I could put it in the freezer. I'll probably go all crystallised though. I could put it in the freezer and have it for dessert after my dinner today. Anybody, does anybody know if that's a good idea or not? Because it's got milk in it. Should you freeze, refreeze milk? Probably not. Nah. Uh, else, yeah, so basically I haven't drunk it. And after my dinner, and after I finish streaming at about half ten, I'll assess whether or not I think it's safe to, to finish it off. Because it still tastes very nice. Peanut buttery, sweet. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm going to try it. I'm going to go downstairs for my dinner in about half an hour's time. Uh, I'm going to put the milkshake in the freezer. And then see what it looks like when it comes out at about half ten. Oh, it might have raw egg in it. Don't refreeze it. Yeah, see, I, 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 yeah, that's what I thought. Not, not about the egg, but I'm sure I heard that you shouldn't refreeze ice cream. I, I, maybe I was making it up, but I, I, that's why I asked, because I was like, hmm, it's, it's, it's come out, it's, it's melted, refreeze it. Mm. Mind you, when I've eaten my hagen dazs and left the pot out and it started to go a bit soft, you, you, you do put it back in, don't you? Yeah, the general advice. Okay. But if it's been defrosted and it's all liquidy and in the fridge, that should be all right, right? <laughs> Not supposed to refreeze anything. Hmm. Anyway. <clears throat> okay, so the general consensus is don't put it in the freezer. Right, okay. What about eating, what about eating it from the fridge then? You can tell me about that. As we crack on with our meeting with Mr. Cronty. I've got dressed for the occasion, for heaven's sake. Come on, let's go. Let's go, Mr. Cronty. What do you want? I was in my office, looking through the agenda for the upcoming meeting at the Ministry of Economy. The meeting was going to be about the ownership of the Big Four, the four largest companies in Swordland. Heart of Swordland, Berger Steel, the Swordish State Corporation, our very own of course, and the Needham Mining Group. Some of these companies were controlled in part or entirely by the state, the others were mostly or completely privatised. I had the power to change that. I have the power. By the power of Grace Cole. The phone rang and I put the agenda down. Hello? It's, 19, it's, 19, it's the 1950s here. Hello? What's that fandangle gadget you've got? Oh, it's from, Ar it's from Arcade, Arcade, Arcasia. Well. Greetings, Mr. President. I'm sorry to disturb you before such an important meeting, but I thought now would be a good time to talk about our arrangement. Ah, yes. I'm sure you'll agree that the support I and my network have given your administration has been nothing but beneficial. I mean, have we been tracking with any degree of, of, of certainty how beneficial his media influence has been in the papers? Can anybody remember? I'm sure the papers recently have slipped a bit. But is it his paper? That's the question. Right. Yeah. I'm not putting my name down for football on Wednesday again. And you watch, they'll have, name, they'll have nine players again. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah, it's never, it's never been warm. I put it straight in the fridge from when I got it from the takeaway last... Because I didn't bring it upstairs, if you remember. I didn't, didn't bring it upstairs with me. Just brought me my chips and my burger. It was very delicious, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> and um, I put the um, milkshake straight in the fridge. That's where it's been ever since. 
So I'll uh, I'll have it tonight after my dinner in refrigerated form. Should be fine. Should be fine. Uh, <coughs> are you still there, Mr. President? Oh, sorry, Mr. Cronty. I'm having uh, daydreams about milkshakes. Sorry about that. Uh, where, where, where? Uh, half of the non-state media in the country has been sharing positive news about you and downplaying negative events. There's always more you could be doing. <laughs> well, there is, to be fair. There's always more. Um, our partnership has been successful. I mean, how do you how do you measure success on this front? The fact that we haven't been lynched, maybe. I'm a, given that there has been some positive spin, uh, I, I'd suggest that uh, it's probably been somewhat successful. I think, I think we could have been. I think we could have suffered worse in the media if it wasn't for this agreement. Um, so do you know what? Yeah, successful to a degree. Oh, I'm glad you agree. <clears throat> Your public opinion could have nosedived were it not for us. I won't go that far. No, don't uh, big yourself up too much, Mr. Cronty. <laughs> I heard him knock on wood. Or was it his head? On another note, I can't help but mention your tax hike, Mr. President. Tax hike, you say? Oh, that. The increased taxes have made a substantial dent in HOS net profits. This has hurt the backbone of the Swordish economy. But I assure you, it is nothing we can't endure. Yes, it was rather unfortunate, Mr. Cronty, but we, alas, had to tighten our belts wherever we could. <laughs> that way of thinking is correct, but you acted wrongly. This will only serve to damage our economy in the long run. He paused for a few seconds. Out of goodwill... I will share a key piece of information. The Lotherbert Group has contingency plans if you decide to do anything rash that would disrupt their empires. You can't blame them, can you? Imagine someone trying to take your authority and personal wealth away without your consent. Hmm. <clears throat> Oof. We will only ask for a reasonable share. Reasonable share of what? Of their, of their, of their profits? <laughs> reasonable share in, in the form of taxes, maybe? Okay, we'll go. We'll we'll we'll, we'll go down this line. We'll be we'll be reasonable about things, as in my version of what's reasonable. It's subjective, of course. <clears throat> That's good to hear. If everyone plays their cards right, it will all be fine. Now, let's talk about those cards. Since the start of your campaign, you've adamantly promoted a planned economy. Going by that, I am worried that you will attempt to nationalise Swordland's largest private corporations. Nationalisation is a concept that goes against everything my father built and stood for. Well, actually, Mr. Cronty, you're quite wrong on that, because as much as we will be trying to keep some things nationalised, we don't plan to nationalise absolutely everything. Private companies, private corporations that are already private corporations will remain private corporations, as far as I'm concerned. If that's, of course, the option I have. If you do want to go down this road, I must insist on you excluding HOS from any such plan. That is my most important request. You may recall that one of the terms of our agreement was that I may ask you for one favour. Well, this is it. Now, in the grand scheme of things, if that's his one favour that he's requesting, that we don't nationalise his company, I think we've got away quite uh, easily there out of that bargain because we weren't going to do it anyway. We're not going completely planned economy. If you recall, our kind of mantra was keep it, certain things nationalised, as but uh, not completely everything. In fact, if we were playing this long term and it was possible, we would try to probably uh, move towards a, a free a free market economy in gradual steps. 
so I'm keeping our fingers crossed here that this is actually, well, whew, that's, that's, oh, but we wouldn't admit that to him, of course. We'd make him sweat a bit. Oh, oh, it's a tough ask, that, Mr. Caronte. Ooh. I had plans to sweep everything under the national banner. Ooh. Ooh. I'll have to think on that. Mm. Tough decision. Oh, don't get your knickers in a twist. <laughs> oh, dear. I understand, Mr. Caronte. I want our partnership to continue uninterrupted. Leave it with me. Ah, as do I. I always keep my end of the bargain, Mr. President. Don't forget. You had better keep yours as well. <clears throat> Before we end the call, there's actually one more thing I would like to discuss. I will be blunt. Oh, as if you've not been blunt so far. Uh, getting straight to the point, you know. Please, carry on. Mr. Tusk is unfit to be the spokesperson for the Lothabert Group. <coughs> Uncannily, me and Mr. Cronty are on the same page there, actually. His archaic thinking has only preserved his a status quo that benefits himself and precious few others. It is high time something changed. And who exactly do you have in mind to replace Mr. Tusk, Mr. Cronty? Who do you think? Let me uh, have a wee think about... Uh, would it be you, Mr. Caronte? <laughs> oh, it is you, Mr. Oh, I see. Here is what I propose. A win-win situation. If you could use your powers to make Burgess Steel, Tusk's main company, state-owned, he would lose considerable influence. Which means I could take over. If I take over with your help, I will be forever indebted to you and support you in all your goals, be they re-election or something more. How does that sound? Ooh, that's perhaps a step too far. That's now us meddling now. <clears throat> Burgess Steel. <laughs> I mean, planned economy. But it would look obvious, wouldn't it? If we make Burger Steel stay owned, but didn't touch Caronti's company, then Caronti takes over. You could not make it any more plain that we pulled a fast one, could you? <laughs> you couldn't make it any more obvious that we've done that for a purpose. And I don't like the, I don't like the thought of that. Oh, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough one. It shouldn't be a tough one. I think neutrality is 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 the key. I'll I'll, I'll have to think about that, Mr. Caronte. I won't make a decision now. I'll, I'll mull it over with me with me advisors. Just think about it. That's all. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. Well then, I've taken up enough of your time today. This has been a productive call. Thank you for your time, Mr. President. Oh, Marsh and I, it's good to see you. Right, Cham, what's the plan for the week ahead? The plan for the week ahead is it's going to be hopefully a quiet one. <clears throat> Working from home tomorrow. Got a list of things to do on my whiteboard. Tomorrow marks the start of my... Because I haven't done, I haven't started yet, but tomorrow marks the start of my Three Kingdoms research uh, and prepar preparation for the series. Starting in earnest tomorrow. And that is on my board. So, um, <clears throat> so I've got a lot of stuff to do tomorrow, but most of it pretty... You know, to do at home basically. Uh, so uh, yeah, quite late tomorrow, and we'll be streaming Baldur's Gate three from seven p.m. until eleven. I'm doing a four-hour session. I've missed Volpus on his escapades. A full four-hour, old-school style four-hour stream. Start at seven, finish at eleven. Um, we're getting Volpus back to business. Uh, so that's my plan tomorrow, Tuesday. Uh, football is supposedly on. Some minor miracle. I don't know what time it is yet, but they might, they, if it's uh, you know a little, a little bit later in the evening, then I might be able to stream 
um, some more of this before I go on uh, go to play football as a pre pre um, pre stream pre football stream. Uh, Wednesday so far, no plans. I didn't have any plans last Wednesday either, but look what happened. So uh, no plans, uh, but we'll see what happens uh, in terms of whether or not I'm actually going to play football, and if not, then I can uh, stream. A game of my choosing uh, <clears throat> and then Thursday more football probably and Friday usual Friday festivities with a mate and then Saturday I'm off to Manchester to see a colleague uh, who well, an old ex-colleague who's now a friend um, and we're gonna go axe throwing mm. axe throwing I'll let you know how that goes <laughs> so that's my week pretty quiet Making things state-owned fits with our planned economy anyway. It does, but, but it, yeah, but I don't know how I feel about leaving some companies state-owned, some companies not. You know, and then people taking over that state-owned company. Or, or, or taking over as head of the, the Loverberg group. But we'll think about it, we'll think about it. I started New Game Plus for Alan Wake. I did. I did start it, um, but I, I got to the I got to Bright Falls and then I ended and I haven't picked it up since. <clears throat> it's going to cost a budget anyway. We could do. Could do. Right. Thanks, Mr. Quaranti. Goodbye. Keep things professional. After a couple of minutes, I went back to reviewing the agenda. Marcel's proposal. Whizzing round our head. Hmm. Hmm. It's a steel company. Could be good to be state-owned. You know, we've always got construction projects that require... ...steel. Hmm. Planned economy. Hmm. We've never liked Mr. Tusk anyway. Not that we're petty, but look what's happening to poor old Iosif Lanceer, who we also don't like very much. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe we can be a bit... Uh... What's the word I'm looking for? And somebody, you know, likes to take a little bit of revenge every now and then on somebody that's really done them a disservice. Quite calculated when I want to be. Can usually serve me revenge when it's uh, cold. Dish best served cold. Yeah, let the dust settle. Don't worry, Mr. Tusk. I've got your number, pal. Several, a uh, couple of years later. Oh, your company is uh, now state-owned, Mr. Tusk. Sorry about that. But you should rejoice. It's it's a good thing. <laughs> Eight news articles. Holy cow! Right, let's get the uh, briefings done first, rather than reading the gutter trash press. Uh, open city information. Here we have refugee camps. Oh dear. The city is currently home to a large number of refugees, a majority of whom are blue dish and have recently fed from Valen. Living in makeshift camps and poor conditions. Well, actually, that's not a bad thing. We wanted the, the refugees to be able to, to be able to filter through, to be honest. <clears throat> Mass massive rally calling for reforms. A massive crowd have gathered in Uziran to demand the President Rain take action to expand bluedish rights in his next reform proposal. The citizens are advocating for changes to Article 6 and 7 of the Constitution to recognise the bluedish people and grant them equal rights. We're on it, man. Chill out, will you? <coughs> An illegal crossings. Temporary detention centres have been erected to process the deportation of the illegal immigrants. Oh, it's all kicking off on the borders. It's just like bloody real life, eh? Uh, right. <coughs> Feti Ejal calls for change to Article 6 and 7. The leader of the Working Party of uh, Blue Deer, workers, yeah, has called upon President Rain and the Grand National Assembly to take action after the recent statements in support of Ishval Ersen. Uh, changes in the constitutional reform proposal. Interesting. Well, we are on the case, don't worry about that. Yes, yes. 
Increased support for bluish rights. Public opinion in cities like Lashaven, known for the significant middle class liberal population, is undergoing a noticeable shift with a surge in support for bluish rights. Interesting. Empathy and solidarity. Even the people are beginning to uh, get on board here. Mm, time has come for meaningful change. Oh, I don't disagree at all. Mm, this is all very in keeping with what we want, to be honest. Right, eight news articles. The Whole Sword Post. Supreme Court delays Ishavel Erzin case and upholds Governor Bronze policies. Let's have a look at this in detail here. In a significant development, the Supreme Court has decided to delay the case, allowing Governor Bronze to continue implementing his policies in Berger. Not good. Chief Justice Hawker, in a clear assertion of constitutional principles, stated that no evidence of unconstitutionality was yet found in Governor Bronze's actions. It's also not good. The Supreme Court's decision has stirred controversy among advocates for bluish rights who have voiced their dissent over the court's perceived inaction in protecting vulnerable communities. However, the delay of the case has been met with resounding support from the patriots of this nation, who applaud the court's commitment to upholding the Constitution. Critics of Erson's arguments maintain that the Supreme Court's delay affirms the existing constitutional guarantees of equal rights for all citizens. This judgment serves as a powerful reminder that the rule of law remains paramount in safeguarding our society and upholding the values enshrined in our country. Yeah, what, a, what a load of tosh. Right, let's have a look at the radicals' view on this. Uh, Bluedish leaders urge President Rain to address Bluedish rights in constitutional reforms. Uh, so there's been a scathing attack on the administration, urgent actions to address the injustices. Yeah. They want us to include amendments to the six and seven as part of our reform. We must get an option for that down the line then. Uh, apparently our lackluster response and inaction have ignited widespread outrage and condemnation from the Bluedish movement. Okay, so the time for us to act is beginning to come near, I feel. The radical, with its unyielding determination and wavering spirit, stands united with the Bluedish Democrats and stand ready to challenge the status quo and forge a future where equal rights for everyone prevail. Another injustice from the Supreme Court. Callously decided to delay the case allowing Bron to continue his oppressive policies. <laughs> this outrageous decision has ignited a firestorm of anger. We condemn the decision of the Supreme Court and are deeply saddened by the darkness that's growing over Swordland over the last decade, which has been exasperated by Anton Rain and his administration. Listen, I don't know what they want us to do, you know, I don't know what they want us to do here, but I, you know, I think uh, this is something that needs to be dealt with uh, sensitively, and we are making moves. Obviously, they can't see all the machinations behind the, the scenes, but, you know, we're doing it. We're doing it. Give us a bloody chance. Refugees suffer because of rain. As more and more Bloods and Wessex attempt to flee Vale, and we are seeing the consequences of Anton Rain's inhumane border policy. Turned away from Swordland, families face homelessness, starvation, and persecution from Victor Smolak's regime. Some head to Lesbia, where they are accepted, but must undergo the country's labyrinthine asylum process. Politicians there are already complaining of a refugee crisis. Rain must act now before more lives are lost. Okay, I'm closing Queen Ali relations, a fresh chapter. Oh, restore diplomatic relations. So, the Le Shaven Times. Let's have a look at this. WPB urges President Rain for inclusive reforms, calls for changes to Article 6 and 7.
Right. Well, I can get some air to my head now, you see. <laughs> right, uh, where are we? More, more, more people are harping on about this bloody thing. I think we get the picture, don't you? <laughs> uh, corporate changes. Yep, proposed reforms have found support within the PIF jib. And our reformist wing of our very own party. <clears throat> okay, so protests erupt as Bluedish community expresses outrage over Supreme Court delay. <clears throat> Massive protests have erupted in Erzurum and its surrounding cities as tensions between the Bluedish community and the authorities have escalated following the Supreme Court's decision to delay Governor Brown's case. The demonstrations reflect the frustration and discontent felt by many Bluedish individuals who believe that the delay undermines the pursuit of justice and equality. And he's deployed special security forces to uh, address the escalating tensions. <laughs> Ah, the NFP have piped up. They accuse us and the Piftjib of undermining national values in support of Urson and a scathing rebuke. The National Front Party has condemned the USP and Piftjib for their recent statement expressing support for Urson and alleging conflicts and inherent racism within the Constitution. The NFP has accused the two parties of compromising the core values that form the backdrop of our nation. NFP's strong condemnation targeted President Rain and Friends Richter, asserting that their actions undermine the very essence of our national identity. By questioning the Constitution and perpetuating a narrative of conflict and racism, the USP and PFJP have betrayed the fundamental principle that unites us as a nation, said Casaro Kibana in his speech yesterday. Well, all of this is really seriously kicking off, isn't it? Kicking off big time. It's all going to come to a head soon enough. Right, what have we got to do? Read the report. Supreme Court delays Urson case until further notice. Okay. We've seen that now about 15 times. Come on now. Papers, briefings. I get the picture. Lucian, <coughs> schedule some time with me to discuss the potential political repercussions of the upcoming economy meeting. <sighs> we just read all that paper, all those papers, all those briefings about this case and about the, the all the bloody stuff. And uh, here we are talking about the economy. Yeah? Let's put it to the back burner for the time being. I've got balls to juggle. Apparently. <laughs> Uh, as per usual, he arrives precisely on time and takes his seat across from us. Good morning, Mr. President. Lucian had dark circles below his eyes. The plethora of political developments must be weighing even on a workaholic like him. Uh, you look a bit tired, Lucian. Are you sure you're getting enough sleep? You know, welfare and all that. I'm trying to, sir. Well, don't overdo it. I'll try not to. I must say, you don't look much better. <laughs> you should have seen me ten minutes ago, Lucian. <laughs> when I had my headgear on and my makeshift tie. <laughs> I look myself in the mirror. Small, similar circles were beneath my eyes as well. Oh, bloody hell. We're all looking like haggard wrecks. I booked some of your time to pre-plan for today's meeting at the Ministry of Economy. But before going into the economic direction, I want to give you a sh short status update. After your supportive statement of Ishval Urson, together with Mr Richter, the Supreme Court decided not to act at all and has delayed the case until further notice. I'm well aware of that, uh, Lucian. I've seen it from 15 different newspapers and five different uh, briefing notes. But thank you for confirming the situation. I'm afraid Chief Justice Hawker seems to be protecting Governor Bron from persecution. This will only increase tensions. 
antagonising him before the vote for the constitution was perhaps not the best idea. Moreover, the bluedish community in Berger is getting increasingly restless over this topic. Nobody knows how long they'll keep delaying the case. This, of course, allows Governor Braun to keep his seat and continue his resettlement policies in Berger, among others. Yes. This is indeed very troubling, Lucian. Any ideas on how we can move things forward? I don't think there is anything we can do about it at this point. Our strategy should be to get public opinion behind us. Luckily, Miss Morgner is already working on the semi-autonomous zone in Berger. We may still be able to get rid of the governor that way. However, there might be a problem with its timing. It would likely only be ready after the vote for the amendments. If the vote succeeds, as we've been working for, your limited decree powers won't be enough to enact a change this grand. I'm afraid you'll need the approval of the Assembly in that scenario. And I doubt they'll support any change to Bronze special authority. He's been a very important member of the party, as well as an important fundraiser. Oh. So our, the very own powers that we have sort of watered down for ourselves in our new constitution could come back to haunt us already, it seems. If we want to try to get this to pass. Oh dear. Oh dear, never mind. There's always a way. This is ridiculous. Tell her to work faster. She's probably working as fast as she can, to be fair to her. Well, it looks like then, Lucian, we're just going to have to find a way to convince the party by the time this uh, happens. Of course, sir. There is one more thing. The representatives of the Bluedish community, namely Mansoon Lek and Feti Ejal, have just informed me that they wish to meet with you. They also wanted me to relay their surprise and support for your statement in defense of Ishval Urson. After all, not every USP president calls the constitution racist. This might have made them soften up to you. If you accept the meeting, it would be the first ever meeting between the WPB and a standing president, a major event for their community. I'm not sure exactly which topics they want to bring up, but we can talk about that later. Hmm. Yes, well, I think this is a positive development. Of course I'd be happy to meet them. I'll let them know, sir. They haven't officially reached out yet. When they do, it will be up to you whether you want to listen to them or not. You can always reject their meeting altogether, of course, so we don't lose support among Swordish nationalists. He took a look at his watch. <laughs> Ooh, is it a couple of seconds past time? For now, let's return to the real reason we are here. Our economic direction. We need to be cautious. Any grand plans about the economy also heavily influence our political standing. We would be changing our relationship with the old guard, the oligarchies and the opposition. As you know, this meeting will give you the opportunity to alter the ownership of the big four, the largest corporations in all of Swordland. We can start the process of nationalization or privatization, or we can just keep the status quo. Again, I remind you that any change will tip an already fragile balance. I personally think we should stay out of this and keep things as they are. There is no need to make new political enemies at this stage in our term. But ultimately, the decision is yours. What are you leaning towards? How should we move forward? So... It seems to be either it can't be winning or all in because Caronti says we could nationalize the Berger Steel, but not his company. So this seems to be like it's either all in or or not at all. Uh, so out of all of these options, I'm quite I'm quite happy. It's just a big four. But wasn't Cronty's company part of the Big Four, no? As was Burgess Steel? Mm -hmm. 
The big fall. Also part of the big four. Hmm. Right. Well, if that's the, if that's what I mean, I don't think this is committed. I mean, it, I don't, this, it seems to be committing because it's saying nationalisation path, privatisation path. So I don't want to nationalise all of them or privatise all of them. So I suppose we'll have to uh, maintain the status quo. Excellent. This is the safest way to victory. He takes out a note. Oh, he took a note in his notebook. Although I think the oligarchies would have liked us to privatise everything, maintaining the status quo will not disturb our relationship with them. This means more stability, both economically and politically. Speaking of stability, some of my connections indicate there seems to be a contest for leadership in the Lotherberg group. Ah, yes, I've heard of this, of course. It looks like Marcel Coronti, see you later Ollie, is making moves to become the key figure. Coronti probably wants his father's seat as the head of the group and Tusk doesn't want to let go of it. It's a significant power struggle considering these are the head of Swordland's two largest private companies. Another reason why I am supporting your decision to leave the situation as it is. Ah, well. There is no reason for us to interfere, directly or indirectly, in their internal struggles. Did Marcel or Tosk contact you? Of course they did. I received a call from Marcel. Might as well be honest with the man. He is the chief strategist after all. No secrets here. And what did he ask for? He wanted to make a deal to leave HOS untouched. And then... I said I think about it. Very well. Was that all that he wanted? He also wants me to nationalise Burger Steel to take down Tusk. <laughs> As I expected. This internal conflict among the oligarchies puts us in an interesting position. Our relationship with Walter Tusk hasn't been good so far. Any move we make now has to be calculated and thought through. Lucian looks at his watch again. Very well then, I'll cancel the meeting since we are not taking any actions. I must get back to work. I wondered if we, if we had picked the nationalisation path, if we could have decided which companies we wanted to nationalise. Not sure how that would how that would have worked. It almost feels like I have missed the opportunity to uh, nationalise um, Burgess Deal. See, if, it, if that's the case, the game wasn't very clear on that, which I, I'm kind of irked about because in hind, I, I kind of wanted to nationalise Burgess Deal. I wanted to, I wanted to take Mr. Tusk off. Call me Betty. I'm glad you have made this decision. Yes, well, I'm not actually, Lucian. I'm thinking in my head. Thank you for your time, sir. I mean, it's not the end of the world, because ultimately we have given Mr. Caronti his favour, which is to not private, not nationalise his company. This whole situation with the whole Walter Tusk thing was an added extra. He did promise to make it worth our while, but nonetheless, it was an added extra. And Lucian's happy. So when you look, Lucian's generally happy, I tend to be happy. So, there you go. Right, we've got briefings, we've got news to read. Uh, Blue Dish leaders meeting and reports and stuff. So I'll go through those whilst I'm eating, of course. So, and then we'll press on with uh, some m more... Um, Political wrangling. So, uh, yeah. Prepare to read some briefings and some papers, folks. I won't be long.
Okay, we're back again. Cham, I think you asked. Oh, you asked earlier. Sorry, I missed the question. If I watched more Fallout, no, I didn't. After the stream yesterday, I uh, went straight. I went straight to bed. <laughs> and I haven't had any, any time to watch it today. But after today's stream, uh, once I've got myself my uh, milkshake, perhaps, or if not, a milkshake, a cup of tea, depending on the debate, what we're going to have either milkshake or maybe some some tea and biscuits. My, my favourite biscuit, two of my favourite ever biscuits. Can I get this camera right? Um, are downstairs. Number one, it's a very simple biscuit, but I love them. Dipped in tea. Custard creams. Love a custard cream dipped in a bit of Earl Grey. Uh, <clears throat> so then, I've got some custard creams downstairs. And um, the other biscuit which uh, you might have to be in the UK to appreciate, but basically Marks and Spencer do a pack of Viennese biscuits. They're just round biscuits with a fluted edge. They come in a yellow packet, and I think they're just called Viennese, and they're, they're literally melt in the mouth. You can only dip them in tea quickly because they're just that soft that they'll just, if you keep it in too long, it's gone in your tea. You're gonna dip it and eat it quick, but it's, oh, it's, oh. They're my, they're my favourite biscuits to dip in tea. They're the old Marks and Spencer's Viennese. Buttery, sweet, oh, I don't know, there's just something so delicious about them. Chocolate bourbons, not a fan. I'm not a fan of cho I love chocolate, don't get me wrong. You know, Galaxy, particularly Galaxy. But when it comes to chocolate ice cream, <clears throat> when it comes to chocolate biscuits, when it comes to chocolate cake, not the big, not the biggest fan. I'll eat them if if there's nothing else on the table. But the, you know, if it, if it came to cake, a chocolate cake wouldn't be my first choice. I'd rather have lemon drizzle or Victoria sponge, you know, something like that, or carrot cake, if, especially if it's Costco's. Uh, you know, and if it comes to uh, biscuits, as I said, I'd rather have custard creams, Viennese jam, Viennese, um, <clears throat> rather than bourbons, for example. So, so yeah, that's not the biggest ch chocolate, you know, muffins, it wouldn't be a chocolate muffin, oh no, it'd have to be blueberry. So, so yeah, but yeah, so it's either going to be a cup of tea with my favourite biscuits, two of my favourite biscuits, big plate full of them, because as I said, as, as of tomorrow, I'm going to be completely my regime, so I'm determined that this evening, I'm going to have the last of my treats. So if I'm going to have custard creams, I'm probably going to have six custard creams, and five Viennese biscuits, just to finish it off properly. But anyway, <clears throat> but then I paid five pound for that milkshake, <laughs> so I better will eat, drink it. Um, right, Blue Dish leaders meeting. We've heard it all. We've seen it all. We've meeted. We had meetings about it all. Now let's sit down with the people themselves and flesh out what the hell is going to happen here. Or let's at least put them into the picture about what we're trying to do. All this negative press, president needs to that, president needs to do this, president needs to do that. I can't do everything, you know. I'm not a dictator here. How big is a milkshake? Um, it was regular milkshake size. Maybe about 350 mil, something like that, maybe. Maybe a bit bigger than that, actually. It wasn't a large one, it was just the regular one. We're going to accept the meeting, of course. Oh. <laughs> Let's have the meeting, shall we? Okay, here we go, folks. This could be a big meeting. <coughs> Lucian and I were waiting in my office ahead of our talk with the representatives of the Blue Dish movement. After I accepted the meeting, Nia informed us of their intention to convince us to add further changes to our constitutional amendment proposal. That could lose us some votes, that, you know. But it has to happen. Lucian didn't seem too happy about my decision to put pressure on the court by highlighting the, dis highlighting the discrimination in Article 6 and 7 of the Swordish Constitution. But since our statement with the PIF jib, there were rumours that we would also include these changes in our proposal. Lucian, <clears throat> if there's something you wish to say before our guests arrive, now would be the time to spit it out, good man. 
Forgive me, sir. I just think we are in a precarious situation at the moment. You already publicize, uh, publicly criticized those articles for being discriminatory against the bluish people. They'll expect you to act on your words now. But I advise against altering our proposal at the last minute, especially with changes that would never be accepted by our party. Oof. With that said, if you don't act on this, you'll risk losing all the Brutish support you've gained so far. Do you think there's no way to pass changes to Article 6 and 7? It's true that Mr. Urson's case gathered a lot of sympathy, even from the USP. But I must say, it's not enough to pass the amendments. Not unless something extraordinary happens. My general advice is not to lose focus of our constitutional amendments by messing with these articles. Our priority should be reforming the governmental structure. Ooh, that's a tough one. Livia stepped in and informed us that the representatives had arrived. Oh, this is going to be tough. Okay. With my assent, she opened the door to let them both in. Mansoon was the spokesperson of the Independents <coughs> and the former leader of the WPB, while Fetty Ejal was the WPB's current leader. Good morning, Mr. Ejal, Mr. Leck. Good morning. Healthy mornings to you. Barilba Zinjar. It is great to finally meet with you, Mr. President. Thanks for having us. Good morning, Mr. Leck. Mr. Ajal, please take a seat. My bluedish brothers, <laughs> right before we tell them, we ain't changing the constitution because <laughs> I don't think we're going to do it. If we do it, it's not passing and we have put too much work into it. Oh, this is really bad. This is a bad, this, this is an awful decision to have to make. Let's not be presumptuous though. Have you never seen the Lincoln movie? Oh, I reckon you're going to really enjoy it. Honestly. This game reminds me of it so much because of just all the political wrangling, trying to get a constitution passed. Yeah, it's always a good, I mean, uh, yeah, a good, it's a very good, very good movie. Um, yeah, <laughs> my bluish brothers, if we were confident we were going to make the amendments, we'd, we'd go all out. But we, we're not, so <laughs> we'll just keep it polite. Take a seat, my good man, men. We shook hands and took seats on two sofas facing each other. You must know why we are here, Mr. President. First of all, we thank you for standing with Ishval Erson and the rights of the Bludish people of Berja. This is a very dark time for the Bludish people in Berja and we need all the help we can get. Governor Braun's racist policies are being illegally protected by the Supreme Court under the guise of a large-scale threat by the so-called terrorists. We are already working on a proposal to restructure the special zone. Governor Braun will soon be gone. <laughs> really? There, do we reckon that's going to happen? Lesser of all the other, I'm not that happy with any of these options really, but I mean, we are working on something, so let's see if we can placate them. Maybe we can actually use that as a method, of, a means that we're not, you know, we don't have to amend the constitution because we're doing other things instead. How about that? I think they're gonna buy it. I have heard about that. We ask that you prioritize it after your reforms. The reforms, yes. Thank you for following up on this, Mr. President. I hope it becomes a reality soon. 
We never would have expected such statements of support coming from a USP president. You have our appreciation. But know this, if you're really willing to fight for the rights of the British people, we will champion you to the end. That's great to know. Thank you, Mr. Ajal. Again, I don't want to be going all in here. <laughs> this is what we want, but I kind of... I just don't want to promise it all now and then turn around and say to you, but yeah, but we're not making the constitutional changes, matey. <laughs> you know, it's a political suicide right now. You must understand, I've got many things to, to juggle here. Itta, of course. With the support of Mr. Richter and the BFJP, we worked on a proposal to change the articles you singled out as discriminatory. It was a bold move openly attacking the solid structure of this country, so I'd like to believe that we share the same sentiment about reforming our constitution. If you're willing to listen, we can explain the details to you. I'm listening. I mean, that's very true, but we haven't heard him out yet. Mr. Leck, could you read the proposed changes for us? Mansoon took out a stack of papers and started reading. The ethnic term sword will be removed from the constitution. We will remove the lines that define the citizens of Swordland by nationality. Firstly, the line, everyone who is bound to the swordish state by citizenship is a sword, will be removed entirely from Article 6. As for the following lines in the rest of the article, the term sword will be replaced with citizen of swordland. And the line in Article 7, every sword is equal before the law, will be modified to... Everyone, regardless of language, race, colour, gender, political thought, philosophical belief, religion or disability, is equal before the law. <laughs> okay, we're going to be honest with them. I think honesty is the best policy here. As much as I do indeed agree with these changes in principle, I don't have a sound plan to pass them in practice. We could fob them off to say that we'll bring them in the next reforms, but that's not that's not gonna. No, no. We yeah, we can propose these. Realistically, those fellas, they're not gonna pass. Mr. President is right. Given the current political reality, adding these to our proposal would eliminate the possibility of any reform being made. I'm sure you understand. We need a realistic proposal. This is the opposite. If we can't reform the judiciary and the amendment procedures, what good does it do? If even the leadership of the governing party doesn't believe in the possibility of change, of course nobody else will. But this is a fallacy. If you don't support us because of the existence of people who are against us, how do we even start fixing the problem? It's time this country stops pushing the bluish people to the corners of society. Etta. And that deadlock is what's created the liberation movement. Uh, the liberation movement? Exactly. As long as the government creates a deadlock and doesn't offer solutions, the British people will have to do what it takes to defend themselves. And as long as you label those people who fight for their rights as the villains, you are deepening the problem and turning it into a cycle of violence. See that, Jam? This is meeting is a tough one. I knew you were in cahoots. We can't continue like this, but what are we going to do about it? We're not going to, we're not, we're not doing it. We can't. 
Well, maybe we can. No, I don't think we can. Okay, so if we say this, it's almost like we're agreeing to make the constitutional changes, but we're not. So it, it, it seems like a, a, a foolish answer uh, to pick. Uh, I'm glad you agree. Okay, so since we're already on the same page, we should talk about how realistic it is to pass these changes instead. Okay, so, yeah, I'm on board with that, yeah. Alright. I know you are rightfully wondering how we can gather a majority in both the Assembly and the Supreme Court. In the past, Mr. Richter and Ms. Suhail supported us greatly in this endeavour. And I believe the PFJP would get behind our proposed reforms. If you can gather the support of the USP, the Assembly won't be a problem. Um, gathering the support of the USP is the real problem here. Do you think the Conservative MPs will have a sudden change of heart? There is only one thing that can get them to work with us. If Mr. Hawker and his puppets are looking to put an end to the liberation movement, I am willing to cooperate with them and give them what they want. Lucian's eyes widened for a second. What are you saying, Mr. Ijar? If you include these changes in your proposal, I will give you the best bargaining chip you can get. Intelligence about the BFF and the locations of its leaders. Ooh. Well, bugger me. Mr. Ajal has put a curveball out there. Well. Oh. I mean, for, for a start, clearly he knows where the leaders are. Hmm. Direct ties, yes. We'll put that to one side for a second. Are you serious, Mr. Ajal? Yes. This would give us a significant edge, of course, but I still don't think it would be enough on its own. Besides, can you really deliver on your claims? I thought the administration was behind this reform. We came here with a real offer and you keep questioning us? What's wrong with this sudden change of attitude? I think we might have to give it a try. I think we might have to give it a whirl. It's a bit risky. But no risk, no reward, right? Okay, Mr. Ajal. Here's my thoughts. If you can promise us the BFF, maybe we can make this work. That I promise. He straightened his posture. Then we can talk about the details. As I said, I'm offering the solace an end to the BFF. I will give you everything I know and can gather, even the connections in my own party. I am prepared to do this for the greater good. But to you, I'm offering the possibility to become the president who finished off the secessionists. The president who started a new age in Swordland. Think of the popularity you'll enjoy. This would be a huge boost for the administration, and it will help your standing with traditional solists. And if we change the constitution in the process, the Buddhist community will be applauding you with all their might. Yeah, well, this all sounds too good to be true, which, uh, when that happens, it usually is. <laughs> exactly, Martian eyes, there has to be a catch, surely. Right, what questions have we got? Right. Okay. I don't know if I can ask all of these or not. <clears throat> 
Right, we'll start with your connections between the Workers' Party and the BFF. Tell me everything and why you're now selling them out. As soon as you give the green light, I will suspend the people from our party who have ties to the liberation movement. I am ready to give you the names of all of them when the time comes. If this achieves progress for Bluedish rights, I am willing to go to the end. Questions, questions. Uh, uh. Okay, we're not going to get into the intricacies of their nuances. Right, okay, but why now? The support for the Workers' Party is increasing more than ever. I firmly believe that we will make it to the Assembly in the next elections. If we're to finally take place in the democratic process, I believe we must completely sever our ties with the liberation movement. Our movement is now far larger than theirs, and we have to take this opportunity for the Workers' Party and for Brudish rights. Okay. Are you certain we can catch all of the leadership in one swoop with your intelligence? That's on your security forces, Mr. President. But I'm very certain that the re recent intel I received about their location is reliable. Among the leadership, the highest profile name is Aulan, Derwin Arg's brother. What do you do with that information is up to you. Hmm. Do you know who their current leader is? Since the arrest of Derwin Arg, I don't believe they have a single leadership position but his brother is the most respected high-ranking member inside. Can you tell me about him? According to my sources, a group of four commanders are leading the movement in Swordland. Arwen Arg is among them. I've learned that Arwen has been to Rumberg several times to meet with the Rumbergian Intelligence Directorate. Apart from Rumberg, he also seems to have ties with the Galcondist administration in Derdje. Since Operation Bear Trap commenced in Valen, Rumours have been circulating that Arwen and his brigade are planning to increase their activity. What's even more striking is a yet-to-be-confirmed report which points to the involvement of several wealthy Swordish businessmen in smuggling Arcasian and Rumbergian weapons to them. Oh. I hope that's not true, but it probably is. Right, okay. This is big news, Mr. Ajal. I want this intelligence over to my team as soon as possible. Of course, as soon as you add the changes to Article 6 and 7 to your proposal. Right, and if this becomes public, how do you expect to keep your leadership of the Workers' Party? I don't. I intend to give leadership back to Mansoon. The party still respects him immensely. And his name hasn't been stained like most of ours. The government did not label him as a former terrorist. And neither was he declared a target by far-right nationalists. Yet. As much as I feel like I'm not ready for that responsibility, <clears throat> I'm ready to do whatever it takes to grow the Bluedish democratic movement. I'm ready to be the new target. This way we can start anew. Okay. Let's move forwards then. Let's talk about how we deal with the votes. I believe that according to their plan, that part is all on us, sir. We'll give you the BFF and you'll get us the votes from the USP, Mr. President. <sighs> give me a headache, okay. What about the Supreme Court? What about it? You're already going directly against the old guard? Don't you already have a plan to get your current reforms through the court? What does it really change for you? With all due respect, Mr. Leck, <clears throat> we are not children here. You know how risky this is. If we lose this, our entire reform package goes down the drain. Not just Article 6 and 7. The addition of these reforms would flip our plan upside down. The implications are not the same at all. 
then do your absolute best and make sure it doesn't fail. We are not going to negotiate our rights here. Either you will fight for us and we will give you what I said in return, or you abandon the brutish democratic movement. Oh, we're making a decision right now. No further talking. Right. Hang fire. Very risky. It's very risky. But we're going to give it a shot. Oof. Oh, this is this is uh, nothing like putting a few spanners in the works to to, to make me have even more sleepless nights. Can you see my bags under my eyes? Let's go for it. Come on, let's fight. That's great to hear. Thank you, Mr. President. You will find an ally in me, and I will deliver my promises. You can count on what I said. Right, well, thank you both. Together we will achieve a better democracy in Swordland for everyone, regardless of culture, language, or ethnicity. Thank you, Mr. President. They both stood up and shook my hand. This drastic addition to the proposal at the last minute <laughs> would surely be a cause of contention. I had no idea whether Fetty Ijal's plan would work. I can remember. I can flippy remember. Right, what have we got going on here? Oh my god. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to finish off mid-dinner. So we'll do some more reading of the papers and the uh, dossiers and then we shall continue on to see just how we have made our life ten times more difficult. <laughs> oh
Okay. <clears throat> the radical not convinced here, thinking I'm doing it for some kind of political strategy. I mean, you can't really blame them, I suppose, in the grand scheme of things. We have done some things for political strategy in our time. <laughs> but this is not one of them. Well, the Unified Education Language Act. Oh, this act. Yeah, veto it. Thank you. I never need to read it. Right, what was what was the next thing? I'm assuming that was the uh, bill that was uh, talked about by Mr. Kibben. But we just failed to read and just got rid of very quickly. <laughs> Imagine if it wasn't. Okay, they want immediate discussions about these changes, as we would expect, I suppose. Uh-oh. Walter Tusk is on the phone. You should count yourself lucky, Mr. Tusk. I mean, if, I had my, if I had my way, you'd be in trouble of losing your position. Okay, so, uh, <coughs> President Rain speaking, keep it uh, very matter of fact. Good afternoon. I heard some disturbing news. News about a deal between you and Marcel Coronti. What kind of deal? Oh, something about controlling the media listen to me carefully now rain i suppressed those rumors for you for now they will stay that way if you do what i say What do you want? Let me tell you what I want first, and I will let you decide. That damn boy, Marcel Caronte. I want him out of the equation. I found some evidence linking him to the Coronelli cartel. A powerful crime syndicate. What I want from you is simple. I will feed the information to the officials. I want you to start an investigation into the heart of Swordland. That's all I ask. That's not too much to ask, right? Is this information verified, Mr. Tusk? I wouldn't tell you if that wasn't the case. Heed my words, President. If you want to keep being one, and then he hangs up. What an utter cheek. Ah. Interesting. Well, uh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, right, oh, Kingdom of oh, Kingdom of Rumberg. Rumberg informs of whistleblower escape. Rumberg has informed us about an escaped whistleblower headed to Swordland. They have prematurely requested the extradition of any whistleblowers from the Rumberg if they are to be found. Chelston Hailstone, the said whistleblower, is reported to possess highly sensitive information about a covert weapons programme. Queen Beatrice Livingston's administration has demanded the immediate return of Hailstone, considering his defection as a breach of trust between the two nations. Oh. Oh, hang on a second. Is that real? Is that an excuse to uh, continue to uh, find a, a reason to invade us, perhaps? Drive-by shooting in Avery.
The group of armed assaults has been recognised by the Ministry of Interior to be from the known crime family, the Skinner. Their target seems to be one of the shops from the Coronelli family. Gang warfare happening on our very streets. CSP criticises Rumberg and Arcasia. CSP ain't happy with anybody, it seems. Right, what have we got going on here? Confronta confrontation before the vote. <sighs> Ooh, don't like the sound of that. Confrontation. No need for confrontations around here. Okay, here we go, folks. This is big. The Maroon Palace was bustling with activity as party leaders and their entourages filed in one by one to discuss the latest changes to the constitutional reform proposal. Inside the presidential office, the tension was thick in the air and the sound of hushed whispers filled the room. I shifted in my seat, scanning the room as the leaders of the USP, with Gloria Tory in the front, walked in. <laughs> Gentlemen, Miss Tory, thank you for coming. I trust you've all received the latest version of the reform proposal. <laughs> I'll see, yeah, swear. Be all very nonchalant about it. We did, and we have some concerns. But today, Miss Tory will be speaking on behalf of the party. The party leaders exchanged wary glances before taking their seats. Oh, this feels like an ambush. Right. Okay. Um, well, mm, each and every one of you. <clears throat> okay, okay, fine. Shall we begin, shall we, Miss Tory? Well, Mr. Rain, I think it's fair to say we're all here because we're deeply concerned about the recent changes you've made to the reform proposal, especially after the whole party gave you the necessary signatures to open the constitutional reform process. Her voice was taut with anger. You can't just make changes like this at the last minute. We had a deal and you've gone and changed the terms of it without any consultation. <sighs> okay. There is a reason behind my decision. Let me explain, and I'm sure you will approve. <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously, we could badge it as uh, protecting blue cities. Let's just, let's just, you know, get straight to the meat and bones of the matter. Oh. She leaned forward, her hands gripping the table's edge tightly. Mr. Raid, I'm not sure if you understand. You can't sweet talk your way out of this. The whole party is extremely disappointed with your additions. Removing the very foundational concept of this country? You know what that means? Are you really planning to convince us by violating our agreements and confronting us with a surprise reform package that includes changes that go against the values of the party? You can't be that naive, Mr. Rain. We suspect you have different ambitions. Holy whipping cow. Oh my gosh. This is 
something else, right? I mean, we could. Uh, I don't want to go off piste here. Different ambitions? What are you insinuating, Mr. It's quite argumentative. Okay, I think we're going to go with this option here. Uh, <clears throat> you are right. I am not that naive. I wouldn't have gone with this if I didn't believe we could pass it. Do you want us to believe that? It sounds like you're trying to legitimize the secessionists and their goals, Mr. Rain. We represent all swords in Swordland and beyond. You know this very well. And despite that, you're trying to shift the meaning of sword and portray it as a purely ethnic term. You are creating a needless stir over this topic and deflecting from the real problems of this country. There is an important offer I need to explain. It will change your perspective. Not when you're betraying the values of our party and republic. We'll keep trying to explain, I think. <laughs> oh, we might be tackling this in the wrong in the wrong uh, wrong tact here. I don't think it's going to convince them now. In hindsight, <laughs> it's a bit late. Uh, yes, if you please would let me finish. Not with the secessionist, you idiot. Oh, idiot, yes. You, you damn fool. No, uh, I have a plan to stop them for good. She snorted derisively. Fine, I'm listening. How are we going to badge this now? So this says, if the proposal goes through, the bluedish movement will aid us in destroying them. Is she gonna, are they going to believe that? That they would turn on their own people? Uh, whereas this is a bit more vague. It says that uh, we have new intelligence that could potentially end them. But it doesn't kind of go into any specifics. Although she, she might ask us to expand anyway. Okay, I think we'll go with number one. New channels of intelligence, plans about the leadership. <coughs> their plans, their leadership. If the proposal goes through, the bloodish movement will aid us in destroying them. Could you imagine if uh, he was lying? <laughs> what is the source of this new intelligence? Um, <laughs> uh, well, it's not exactly a neutral source, is it? Uh, but, um, <clears throat> the Workers' Party or the individual? It's 
not really the part. Well, he heads the party, I suppose. But there's people in the party that need to be weeded out, apparently. So I think we'll go with honesty. Uh, it's Mr. Ajal that is offering his cooperation against the BFF in exchange for the changes. So you are cooperating with the terrorists after all? She bristled with disgust. So the rumours were true. And this is why Miss Graff and her staff were in such a rush. Is the operation underway at least? being monitored and the ministry will be receiving the intelligence as we get it the planning phase is underway is it that's a bit of a white lie but the planning phase isn't underway is it okay i think we'll go again with number one here being monitored and the ministry will be receiving the intelligence as we get it this is not going well and you are letting them withhold information from us in exchange for our support this is frankly ridiculous Intel we received has been reliable. I mean, if we're saying this, then perhaps it has been. Number three is an interesting way to twist it. I don't think it's a good time to do that, really. But maybe it might shock her. I'm quite tempted with number three. I don't know why. Oh no, we, sh we shouldn't. We shouldn't pick number three. <laughs> we really shouldn't. Let's not play. Let's not play the blame game. No, 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 no. Uh, right. <clears throat> I'm thinking number two here, but also if uh, if the intel has been reliable, and yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah, I don't think it's a good idea. <coughs> She's already pretty angry. <laughs> so convincing her or expressing that the intelligence we received has been reliable. It's been confirmed by Miss Graff. Or we can speak about the ideals. You know, look, we're here, we're eliminating the BFF here. Is this not the unity that the USP desire? Perhaps actually it's not the unity that they desire, because ultimately they're quite happy to continue with Article 6 and 7, so maybe even that is probably not... Yeah, so convincing them that the intel has been reliable so far, it's been confirmed by Miss Graff, we can't let go of this chance. How many opportunities, Miss Tory, have we had that's been this in our grasp to get rid of the BFF for good? Think about it. I've heard hushed whispers among the party leaders. Perhaps. Perhaps. Ooh, hang on. Hang on. She turned her back and joined the whispering. Ooh, okay, they're conferring. It's a, good, it's a, it's a start. No, we won't antagonise. Let them whisper away. Just sit here calmly. 
Now would be a good time to have my, my, hat, my, 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 my tie on. You know, the, the, the air of professionalism here. I waited in silence until they finished their discussion. Eliminating the BFF is surely a high priority for the party, Mr. Rain, but this is not the way. We can see how these changes would boost our popularity among the Bloodish people, but without the elimination of the secessionist movement, this does no good for the nation, and that could backfire at any time. Uh, what are your concerns, Miss Tory? Let's try to find some common ground here. I don't think there's much we can compromise on, Mr. Rain. I'm not against these changes in principle, but the political reality is different. In order for us to even start talking about a possible deal, you have to first remove your changes to the election threshold. Okay, now we're playing games. Changes to the constitution here, tweaks there. Now we have to we have to think back to who wanted that election who But that's going to that's going to affect the BFF not the BFF the the worker party bluish party because that means that they might not get in to they might not get into the to the uh, assembly if the threshold remains as it is The Bloods wanted it to be reduced, the NFP did not. So this is going to affect the Bloods. So are they going to change the t terms of their offer? <sighs> I, I, I kind of want to ask her not to be unreasonable, but uh, I don't think she's going to change her mind on this. And I don't want to lose the opportunity <laughs> if she takes a bat ball home. Oh, God. I'm just concerned about the blue dish now because it. Mind you, if. In terms of a swap out. When we're moving Article 6 and 7. I mean, we did we did tell Mr. Ejal that we have to get it to pass. So if the opportunity comes to explain to him, the only way they're going to pass is if we remove the election threshold. So it's a, you know, it's a trade-off. Perhaps he'd have to see see better sense. You know what I mean? So will that ensure your support, Miss Tory? No, it won't. This is only the proposal, Mr. Rain. We may yet have other requests. I want to swear. <laughs> I want to swear. I'm, oh, no, we're not playing these games. We have to. We have to play these games. We ain't got a flipping choice at the minute. It's, it, I'll remove it if we end up making a deal today. I mean, oh, but this seems to suggest that it's, it, this, it, we're making the deal. Uh, flipping hell, fire. We are kind of trapped. It might go down in flames anyway if she has any more proposals that she wants to change that's going to affect the PFJP. Fine. I'll remove it if we end up making a deal today. Good. 
Now let's talk about how you can make amends with our party. The USP is not happy with the changes you made to the Energy Protection Act. You turned it into an Energy Exploitation Act. You opened the way for foreign powers to control half of our energy industry. This is not something we can accept. We want a reversal to the 10% allowance of the Tarquin Sol era. I feel like my balls are in a vice. In the grand scheme of things, that's also... There goes our Gazprom. Oh, those shares that we could have sold, you mean, and made a profit. Oh. Okay, fine. She looked me dead in the eye. We were absolutely furious to learn about your plans to give semi-autonomy to Berger. You will immediately stop all your work on the restructuring of the specials. Oh my god. give in to all of this, surely. And after we confirm the integrity of the intelligence, <coughs> you will arrest Feti Ijal for harbouring connections to the BFF and withholding information from the state. If you can do that, we'll have a deal. Okay, so, number one, back to 10% foreign investment into the gas. I mean, ultimately, that's kind of planned economy principle. It's a U-turn, of course, but... You know, we're in the green growth, so it's probably not the worst time to do it. Mr. Ajal helping us. I mean, he's kind of thrown himself under the bus already. And he might even be safer in prison than assassinated on the street by angry BFF people. Stopping work on the semi-autonomous zone, I wasn't actually 100% on board with that, if you remember. I wasn't 100% all in with it. I kind of wanted them to be a part of the whole country, really, if I'm being honest. So, uh, I'm not... I mean, it's a lot of concessions here, but... We get six and seven in there. We get the constitution passed with all the other stuff in it as well. And with six and seven gone, we still get the support of the Bloodish people. The Bloodish people don't care about Energy Protection Acts. The Bloodish people don't care, you know, that Mr. Giles got to prison probably. Or oh, they might do. If we put him in prison. I mean, we can't. If we if we pull out of the deal now, I mean, I, I'm unsure as to whether there's going to be another opportunity for us to try to further convince, further politically move ourselves to get this to work. Ultimately, all the leaders are sat here, and she's the ringleader. Uh, so if she's walking out of this room without a deal, this constitution is not passing. And when I took the decision. Uh, to put the uh, six and seven against uh, Lucian's advice into the constitutional reform, what did I expect really to happen? <laughs> for them to all, for my, for me to turn around and convince them that this plan was going to going to be the, the the end of the BFF, and that's going to be all you need to know, and therefore I'll have your votes, won't I? Yes, of course you flipping won't. No, no. 
They're going to use that as an opportunity to twist my arm up my back and get what they want. But in the grand scheme of things, in the bigger picture, I think we're going to have to do it. I feel like a scolded child right now. <laughs> She's there holding all the cards. I'm the president. <sighs> I should have been a dictator. Fine. I agree to all the demands. I'll revert the Energy Protection Act, cancel the semi-autonomous zone, and arrest Mr. F uh, Ajal once we have all the intelligence. Do we have a deal, Miss Tory? She nodded in approval and reached out for a handshake. Then we have a deal. I hope you respect it this time. After shaking hands, Gloria together with the rest of the leadership and their entourage left the office and I needed the biggest cup of tea ever. Of all the people to see after that, it is not Peter that's top of my list. <laughs> So, how did it go? Why, smooth as silk, Peter. Smooth as silk. It didn't, <clears throat> I'm gonna be honest, Peter. It didn't go as planned completely. We reached an agreement. <clears throat> But it seems like the party is uniting under Miss Tory now. She may be their next candidate. She's a central figure, but I doubt the party considers her candidate material. I suspect she's a decoy, Anton. Whoever the real contender is, they're waiting for the right moment to come out. But for now, we should just focus on our next steps. If we can actually pass these reforms, you'll be making history. Peter took a look at his watch. Oh, there is another thing. Friends wanted to talk to you about the new changes before the vote as well. I took the liberty of inviting him to join us after your meeting with the party. He should be here soon. <sighs> right. Good. Let's get this over with. It's been a long day. There is... Suddenly, Olivia informed us about Friends Richter's arrival. On my gesture, Friends entered the office. After shaking hands, we sat down on the sofas. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, it's good to see you. I hope everything is going well with the preparations for the vote next week. With your support, Mr. Richter, we will be making history. You can count on the USP. <laughs> we say, thinking in our head. Can you? <laughs> well, about that. Friends leaned backwards and looked at me squarely. Oh, sheesh. You didn't mention more changes to the proposal. You, knew, you know I support your latest additions to Article 6 and 7, but who gave you the authority to remove already agreed upon terms? On my way here, I learned you were suddenly removing the change to the election threshold. We've told you numerous times that a decrease to the threshold is a necessity. I must say I'm very disappointed about this, Mr. Rain. You are putting me in a difficult spot. I cannot let you abuse our willingness to work with you. You cannot act like we are supposed to support you, no matter what. Is this the same Mr. Richter that's got ties to, to going to Arcadia and doing some sly things?
What are your concerns, Mr. Richter? You modified terms that we've already agreed on, Mr. Rain. I cannot convince my people if you're going to act without our approval. If you really want my help, you'll help us out and give us proper credit. You will acknowledge the PFJP as the leading party of the reforms, and you will appoint me as the head of the reform committee. Can you even afford to change your position? Of course he can afford to change his position. He wouldn't say it otherwise, would he? I mean, the reform is almost through. Head of the reform committee? What's it, what, I mean, what is he going to... Is he going to put more proposals in there last minute himself? What if we put him in charge of it and he puts back in <laughs> the election threshold? I don't think I don't think it happened. I don't think the game would do that. I think I think this is our way to buy his support. Um, the PFJP is the leading party of the reforms. Does it really matter who's leading the reform? I couldn't really care less who's leading the reforms at this point. <laughs> really couldn't care. It's not about who's leading the reforms. It's about getting. I almost feel like we're going to be ousted in the next elections. The reforms will pass and we won't get any credit for it at all. Uh, the Bluish people will be reunited and again, well, we'll, we'll, do, we'll just, just be swept under the carpet. We'll be the president that did everything and got nothing in return. <laughs> but at least we can retire and look back on the future of Swordland and think, well, we did our best. Uh, if we don't agree to this, I, he's probably not going to, uh, we're not going to get the PFJP support in the reform votes, and we need those votes. So, for the good of the nation. For the good of the nation, Mr. Richter. Remember that. Remember that. Great to hear. So it's a deal then? Deal. We shook hands. You're doing the right thing, am I? Thank you for the meeting, Mr. Richter. Thank you, Mr. Ray. I'll be taking my leave now. See you in the vote. He left the office and I went to discuss the developments with Peter. <laughs> oh my God. Right, it's 20 past 10. I wanted to... We've got the completed assignments here. Fluctuating energy prices. Energy Protection Act back at 10%. They were stable, now they're fluctuating again. And we've gone back to 10% energy. Right, oh, the newspaper's going to have a field day here. We'll have one more turn. Oh, he's already been arrested! The growth line has flattened. Oh, sheesh, kebab. Right, look, Fetita Jail's arrest unveils alarming links to Bloodish terror. In a decisive blow to the Bluish Freedom Front's insidious network, the arrest of Feti Agile has sent shockwaves through the nation. As the evidence mounts, it becomes clear that Agile had direct ties to this extremist organisation, further highlighting the urgent need to safeguard our society from their dangerous influence. As the leader of the Workers' Party of Bloody, his arrest has, spark has sparked a wave of concern and raised eyebrows within the Bluish Democratic Movement. Agile's apprehension marks a significant victory in the ongoing battle against domestic terrorism. 
The allegations against him point, uh, paint a troubling picture of an individual deeply entrenched in the web of BFF extremism. This arrest not only disrupts their nefarious activities, but also expresses the true face of those who seek to destabilize our nation. The WPB now faces a critical juncture, compelled to address the implication of Agel's arrest on its party standing and the larger Blue Dish Democratic movement. As the investigation progresses, clarity and transparency will be crucial in maintaining public trust and reaffirming the party's commitment to its core principles. <sighs> President Reigns' appalling betrayal. Slap in the face. By crediting Franz Richter, uh, the opposition leader, for the upcoming constitutional reforms. This astonishing move has left USP supporters feeling betrayed and undermined. President Reigns' decision to shower praise on Richter and even appoint him to lead the reform committee is a blatant disregard for the unwavering support of the USP. It is an insult to the countless USP members who have tirelessly fought for progressive change and tirelessly championed the cause of the working class. By elevating Richter and changing the proposal at the last minute, President Reigns has shamelessly ignored the contributions of USP members who have long advocated for meaningful reforms. Oh dear. Oh dear. Terrorist jail under arrest. Friends Richter leading the reforms. Bipartisan cooperation. The esteemed leader of the opposition. With a spirit of unity and collaboration. Is this is this Caronti's paper? Uh, Emphasising the importance of cross-party cooperation in shaping the future of our great nation. President Reigns' statement signals a departure from political divisions and a sincere recognition of Richter's expertise and dedication to the betterment of our constitutional framework. By appointing Richter to lead the Reform Committee, the President demonstrates his commitment to inclusive governments and fostering a truly representative process. That's, that's what I was thinking when I made the decision, of course. After the expansion of the proposal to include changes to Article 6 and 7, the decision to credit Richter and entrust him with this crucial responsibility reflects the government's belief in working together towards stronger rights for the Bluedish community. It sets an encouraging precedent for a constructive dialogue and consensus building in addressing the pressing issues facing our society. The arrest of Fethi Agil, uh, Ejal has drawn strong condemnation from the party, who believe it to be politically motivated kind of was a violation of democracy and basic human rights <laughs> what's happening behind the scenes you don't want to know people trust me oh, Jesus Christ unjust arrest says the radical you've never been on my side anyway in an outrageous display of state power, the tyrannical government has snatched Fetty Edgel, an esteemed leader of the Workers' uh, Party of Blue Deer, into the clutches of oppression. This abhorrent move, dripping with a stench of authoritarianism, exposes the regime's ruthless agenda to obliterate any hint of progressive ideals. <laughs> an unwavering champion he was, was he? Vendetta, you say? This despicable arrest built on baseless allegations, linking him to the British Freedom Front baseless, from his own lips actually, exemplifies a politically driven witch hunt concocted to suffocate any opposition to their archaic policies. Some, some very powerful words here. In the face of this grotesque chapter in our nation's history, we must channel our collective rage to protect the sacred rights and liberties under vicious assault by this repressive regime. Any more horrendous words you want to fit in there? Any more adjectives you want to throw out there? Radical? Okay, well then, shut the fuck up. Fetty Agile transported to Antel Rock Prison. No publicly disclosed charges yet. Look, needs must, alright? Does make you wonder, this is just a game, but it does make you wonder, this this kind of stuff happens in real life clearly. So when decisions are made and things, policies are passed, and you just, just what does go on behind those bloody closed doors? Whew. 
I do wonder. Right, apparently the next is the assembly vote, which is going to be a perfect time to end the session. Not before the vote, of course, after the vote's finished. But we have to see this. WPB condemns the arrest. Strongly condemned. Front to democracy. We'll deal with this after the vote. All right, we'll deal with this after the vote. We have to get through the vote first. Interior Ministry confirms the validity of Fetty Agil's intelligence. Hello, Shelley. Okay, so the intelligence is valid. Valuable asset in their efforts to address the threat. Lydia's graph expressed her optimism about a historic possibility to neutralize the entire organization with a swift operation. Hi, Saria. You've come at just the right moment. You've missed all of the build up to this vote that's about to happen right now. The constitutional vote is happening. But there was some very big spanners in the works today. I've had my knackers in a vice. If I had any hair, it'd be pulled out. I'm the president, but I feel like I felt like a child in, in the headmaster's office. Gloria Torrey and Friends Richter have had me in a game of tennis. But here we go. <sighs> Sergey was driving me towards the Grand National Assembly for today's historic vote. It was a big day. I was looking forward to striding in there. Happy as Larry. Passing the report, passing the vote, and off we go. No, now I'm really I want it to pass, but I feel deflated after what's just happened, really. I'm like, oh, just get this over with, will you? I wondered whether my attempt at changing the constitution would end in any uh, different uh, would, would end any differently than Alfonso's. <clears throat> I looked out the window as the noise of the city diminished and saw that we were already inside the palace complex. The complex housed the buildings of all government branches in the centre of Hall Sword. It was one of the biggest developments in Swordland. The Maroon Palace on a small hilltop surrounded by trees. We passed by the palace and entered the forest that separated it from the Grand National Assembly. We drove on the small road that wound through the forest. It was a warm day, so I rolled down the window. I could hear birds singing from the trees. Are you okay back there, sir? I'm okay, Sergey. How are you doing? I am as good as can be, sir. Sergey made the left turn out of the forest and entered the vast garden area of the assembly. Did you know that Mr. Tarquin Song came to Holsword this morning? I heard some politicians talking about it today. Apparently this is the first time he's come to the city in the last five years. I thought he left the mainland and lived on Duru Island never to return to politics, but they were saying he might be here to exercise his member of honor rights for the first time. Of course, he has a vote. It's one vote at the end of the day. But I think it's more of a statement. You know, the solists in the party see him rock up. It's going to send send him ra ravenous. Exactly. I, I know. That's, that's, what my, that's my bigger concern, is the frenzy is going to whip up in his old loyalists. Sergey, Sergey, slow down, slow down. Are you sure? Yes, sir. I overheard several men talking about it around the gardens of the assembly. Hey, it could just be rumours, of course. Do you think he's here because of today's vote? Yes, Sergey. Most likely. Concern washes over our face.
it's really interesting how previous decisions all intertwine here because we could have had him arrested you don't remember the conversation about whether we should have him tried for his crimes and we were like nah I'll leave him be he's retired on his little island what harm could he possibly do well I'm sure he will support you sir well I'm glad you're sure Sergei because I'm flipping not Oh, it was part of the constitutional reform. Yes, that's very true. That's very true. Which would make this even more... Actually, that would make this even more interesting then. <laughs> if he got wind that the constitution was going to have him potentially tried, and he, t and he turned up himself, he would probably be much more likely to whip up a scene at that point. <laughs> so seeing as we're not doing that, maybe he'll be a bit more silent. <laughs> Maybe you can speak to him first. Who knows? Club him over the head and ship him off. Sergey, take the unconscious Mr. Sol somewhere where he won't be seen for the remainder of the day. Thank you. Yes. We'll learn soon enough. Okay. We've arrived. Thank you, Sergey, as always. I was feeling right confident and happy the past couple of sessions, thinking the, the growth line's gone up, you know, things are happening, we're doing stuff, everything's... Now, <clears throat> I mean, obviously the game has got a finite end, so the ending of the game is going to result in us not being president, I assume. I would like us to be not be president because we chose to stand down, actually. Uh, on a high, and I, I, I get the sneaking suspicion that we're leading towards uh, being ousted, it feels like. Manju Rumberg haven't played their hand either yet, so there's still more twists to be had here, I think. But uh, right now, my position feels quite precarious. Good luck with the vote. Oh, indeed. I walked up with all these feelings and thoughts running through my head. Party members spitting on my name. They think that I've discredited them because we've made the piff jib, the, 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 the flag bearers of the reform. Mr. Richter's head of the committee. They all feel like, like I've sold them out. Tory's got me, had me in a vice, you know, me, 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 me knackers in a vice, forced me to concede reform thing, you know, uh, previously agreed reform things. It's all gone a bit horribly wrong. The door opened to reveal vast corridors of wood and white stone. I joined the crowd of people who were walking slowly toward the parliamentary hall. Suddenly I noticed Lucian emerge from the crowd of packed politicians in front of me. He looked relieved when he saw me. Ah, sir, there you are. Have you seen Vice President Vecton? He's nowhere to be found. Uh... We need every vote. If he's getting his leg over, or he's getting drunk somewhere, this is the final straw for Mr Vecton. Because if I get an option to fire him, I'm firing him. I shall put my blind faith in the man. I don't think I've missed a vote this important, Lucian. Surely not the useless Vice President Peter. Surely not. Imagine if we failed the vote by one and he, and he didn't turn up. Could you imagine? I hope you're right. At any rate, how about yourself? Are you ready to finally face the assembly, sir? Lucian? <clears throat> I've just heard something quite worrying from Sergei. We'll address that later, sir. Come, we must go inside. Okay. <laughs> we followed the crowd into the parliamentary hall. After we were inside, Lucian and I separated to take our assigned seats. I went up to the mezzanine overlooking the hall and sat down. I waited as the MPs took their places inside the hall one by one. 
After a while, I saw Gloria walk to her elevated seat at the center of the hall. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. We will shortly begin with today's agenda of the USP's proposed changes to the Constitution of Swordland. After a short while, everybody was in their seats. According to the current Constitution, constitutional amendments require a two-thirds majority in order to reach Assembly approval. If the vote succeeds, the proposal will be sent to the Supreme Court. The proposal in question includes these points. She started reading the proposal to the Assembly. First section of the changes. Article 57 is modified with the following. <clears throat> she continued reading the proposal, highlighting each section. Section 2, paragraph 36. She went on. May not exercise his right to... And on. The justices of the Supreme Court... Most of the MPs seemed like they were already falling asleep. <laughs> A simple majority is considered. The seat was really hurting my back. Am I going to pass out here? Section 4, paragraph 44a. It felt like an eternity had passed. Finally, she finished reading the changes. I hereby invite all of you to vote. She struck down her gavel. Poof! The loud bang made some of the MPs jump up in shock as they woke from their deep sleep. <laughs> As I previously stated, it will require a two-thirds majority in order to pass. You may now cast your votes. I felt the need to stand up and stretch. I looked down at the hall from the platform I was seated on. Some assembly members immediately walked to the ballot box to cast their votes. Most of them, however, began to congregate in groups around the hall discussing the changes. Go down to the hall where the MPs are, sit back and keep watching for democracy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I should just sit and keep watching, but I kinda wanna do it. <laughs> like a like a like a like a yeah, like a moment of madness. For democracy! The president's gone loopy. <laughs> So I'm not expecting your votes, but... <laughs> go and talk to the MPs. Yeah, we'll go down and mingle. I descended from the mezzanine down to the hall. <laughs> we got to yell like a man. I'm telling you, it's te it was tempting. Uh, but we, 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 we've got, we, as much as it's tempting, we've got to maintain our professionalism here. <laughs> as much as it's killing us right now. Oh, somebody just almost tumbled out my mouth there. Sorry about that. Oh, I'm just going to stretch my legs and go mingle. Oh, I almost, I oh, I almost shouted it. Almost. As soon as I reached the bottom of the stairs, none other than Kasaru Kibana approached me. Mr. President, how are you feeling about the vote? Very, maintain the persona. Very positive, Mr. Kibbener. Even knowing you don't have our support, how optimistic of you. I have lost my respect for you, Mr. Ray. So many problems in Swordland that must be addressed, and yet you insist on stalling us with your democratic reforms. I know you will fail. You will lose the game. And so will your entire administration. I hope to be there when it happens. Keep hoping, Mr. Kibbana. Ha! <laughs> he laughed. He abruptly turned away from me and walked towards his seat. Then I saw Lucian waving at me. He was among a group of people in the corner of the hall. I walked up to him. On my way, I bumped into Mansoon Lek. Mr. President, oh, I'm sorry I didn't see you there. Today is a big day. Let's win this together, shall we? Well, he's on side, and he's now the, or well, soon to be the leader of the WPB, isn't he? So, 
kind, kind of a goodish sign. Threw Mr. Ajal into prison, but hey, had to be done. Exactly. It's a big day for all of us, Mr. Leck. In any case, let's see what the results are first. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to go cast my vote. He shook my hand and walked away. I finally reached Lucian, by now deep in conversation with another member of our party. He excused himself and turned towards me. Sir, did you vote yet? We have to be quick. Uh, what's the rush? I I'll explain on the way. I signed my vote and prepared the envelope. Together, Lucian and I walked to the centre of the hall to cast our votes. He kept rushing me throughout the process. Gloria bowed her head slightly in respect as she saw us vote. Lucian pulled on my arm and whispered in my ear. Mr. President, we may have a problem. Tarquin Sol is here. I know. You have to accelerate the voting process. We need everybody to vote as soon as possible. We don't know what he's capable of right now, but if the Assembly members see him, he might influence them against the proposal. Should I talk to him? What can he do? Talking is not going to make a difference. Simply seeing him is going to spark, you know, further in his bloody old school supporters. Can you imagine Miss Grant? What's she called? Uh, Lilius? Can you imagine Lilius' face? She'll wet herself. Saul, Saul comes marching in. She'll, she'll, she'll be beside herself. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, that, that, the, talking to him to get him away from people. We voted now. We could go and distract him. Whilst Lucian rushes the process, maybe. Or maybe Lucian could go distract him. I mean, this is asking the question. It's getting Lucian's idea. Uh, it's not committing to this. Um, should I talk to him? I would advise against that right now. The Assembly must focus on the vote. Any confrontation between the two of you would draw their attention away. Shout at the Assembly from the centre of the hall. <laughs> Go and ask Gloria to speed up the voting. Or go back to our seats. I think it's kind of like almost like obvious. Yeah. Gloria, can we get can we get a move on, please, Gloria? Uh, excuse me, Mr. President. We have to do things by the book round here. Or we can just go back to our seats and let the process play out as efficiently as it can. I, oh, uh, uh, as a bare minimum, I think we've got to ask her to speed up the process. It's kind of suspicious. Because she can be like, Why, what's the rush, Mr. President? Why, what's the rush? <laughs> Shout out the assembly. Can you get a flipping move on? I've got tea and biscuits to have here. <sighs> now, we'll go and speak to Gloria. Let's keep it as kind of low-key as possible, but we want this to finish up quite soon, Gloria. Time's a ticking, and I've got things I want to say to the Assembly, actually, before we wrap up for the, for the day. Thanks very much. I walked to Gloria and asked her to speed up the voting. She's not going to buy it. She banged the gavel several times. Poof, poof. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the Assembly, we will soon begin counting. Please cast your votes if you haven't already. The pace in the hall definitely increased. The groups dispersed, the MPs began lining up at the ballot box. <clears throat> Can we get two people putting votes in here? Come on, put them in. I'll help. Get out of my way. <laughs> Suddenly, Lucian pulled me aside. Oh, he's here. He's here. He's here. S sir, what do we do? He pointed to the back of the assembly, near to one of the exits. <laughs> I followed his finger to see Tarquin Sol sitting there. Uh... uh <laughs> this is one, one, the effect that one man has on the situation. Could you imagine? Colonel Saul. He looked much older than he had five years ago, but I could tell he had the same fire in him. Some MPs had already gathered around him and were chatting in awe. The assembly gradually went quiet as people started to notice Saul's presence in the hall. Uh, 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 what do we do? 
Oh, well, are we panicking unnecessarily? I mean, Lucian's panicking. If the chief strategist is panicking, I'm panicking. <laughs> we have to make sure he doesn't sabotage anything. I can talk to him. Sabotage? Should we do something? <laughs> Lucian is asking me what to do. And I'm gonna, I can't go back to him. Should we do something? I don't know. Should, you, should we? Should we? Look. I'm going to talk to him. It draws attention to him. Oh, it does draw attention to him. But people are already gathering around him. Okay, no. Make sure he doesn't sabotage anything. I don't know how we're going to do that, but I'm thinking on my feet here, uh, Lucian. Thinking on my feet. Uh, how can we get... Where's, where's Peter? Where's Peter? Where's Peter? We should refrain from giving him the spotlight he expects. Maybe you can address him after the vote? As I was talking to Lucian, I spotted Kazaru Kibana walking to the back of the hall towards Tarquin Sol. Oh, no. That's the last person that needs to be speaking with him. He bowed in front of Saul and gave him a military salute. Seeing this, more people started to approach him. Oh, it's too late. People have seen now. <laughs> oh, hellfire. They were voting you anyway, but he wants to see me fail. <laughs> so although they were already voting no, is he going to try to convince Saul to get other people to vote no? <sighs> Suddenly, Gloria came up behind him, give us a fright. And now we asked her to speed up the vote, so she's probably going to be like, Did you ask me to speed up the vote because you knew he was here? Underhanded, Mr. Rain. Gentlemen, why don't you go back to your seats? Let's follow the procedure. Oh, by the way, we have 251 members today. As you can see, the member of honour is here. He has already cast his vote. Has he now? So, Miss Tory, how many votes are missing? Only a few. Albin Clavin and three other men approached us with envelopes in their hands. Ah, and these must be them. Good day to you, gentlemen, Madam Speaker. Good day, Mr. Clavin. I'm sorry to take so long, Mr. President. There was a friend who needed more clarification for his vote. <laughs> he gestured at the men behind him. Let's get this over with, gentlemen. They went ahead and cast their votes. Let's win this, Mr. President. As if he means it. I feel like they've been sabotaged. I think, I think we've been sabotaged here. He walked to his seat with a fist in the air. Oh, we've been, we've been sabotaged here, big style. Now, why don't you two get back to your seats as well? This is this is a, this is a, a leadership overthrowing before my very eyes. <laughs> I can just I'm being the pessimistic. Lucian, in the words of Anton Rain, we're screwed. We both went back to our seats. When I returned back to the mezzanine, I saw Peter sitting in the chair next to mine. They are looking... I can't see him, but I can just picture him. The, he's fished in air, all little whispers. She's all very... Oh, back to your seats, gentlemen. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Mr. Saul's already cast his vote, you know. Oh. Something is very amiss here. Very amiss. <clears throat> Where were you, Peter? I'm stressed now. I'm not going to be nice to Peter. <laughs> be very matter of fact with Peter. Where were you? I was right here. Where, where were you? Don't. Don't. You were not here, Peter. I was here. Until the voting began. He's turned on us, hasn't he? As he turned on us. I'm telling you, something's not right here. I can It's like a movie playing out before my eyes. I can see it happening, and I can't stop it, but I can see it happening. I 
I mean, maybe I was not in the exact seat here. Sure, but I was here in the assembly. You, Peter, are my vice president. My right hand man. Were you not on my right hand side? No, you flipping weren't, Peter, were you? Where were you? He looked at Gloria, she said, and her assistants counted the votes. Oh, so as she and her assistants. <clears throat> the speaker's seat was only a few metres away from our platform. Oh, I really hope this proposal goes. Peter, you and me are finished, baby. We're finished. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to me, Peter. We're done. I sense a snake here in the grass. Yeah, I hope so too. Judas, Judas. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just being a bit par paranoid here. But my gut instincts are never usually wrong. Let's see. Yeah, let's see, Peter. Let's see. <laughs> you, Glo I expected it from Gloria and Albert. I didn't expect to see Saul, but hey. But you. Hmm. He tried to get Glory's attention by waving at her. Mm, did you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. How many votes left? Glory looked at Peter. She looked annoyed. If you've been in cahoots, if, if you're in cahoots with this guy, you're going to expect this kind of behaviour. Get used to it, Gloria. Get used to it. I've had to put up with it for years. 136 eyes. 40 more votes to count. How many do we need? 250. How many do we need? 150. Hundred and sixty six. Forty votes. So we need thirty out of forty to be I. Peter turned to me. Exactly, Peter. I was doing the maths myself. Thanks very much. Just shut up, Peter. Do you know what? Yeah, I've heard enough of you, from you, for years. Peter, shut up! <laughs> Sorry. We're sat there, hand on head, stressing, the hat's lopsided, the glasses are at the end of the flipping nose here. It's 5 to 11, Joe. Oh, good grief. The drama. Peter looked uneasy. I looked stressed. Peter pointed at where Franz Richter was sitting. Did I not say shut up, Peter? Look at Franz over there. I'm sure he was behind this mess. You shouldn't have trusted him. Peter, shut up. Uh, well. A single bang from Gloria's gavel reverberated across the hall. Everyone fell silent. <clears throat> Hat back straight, tie straightened, sit in the chair straight, maintain composure. I feel like I'm in a dentist waiting, waiting room. The voting has been concluded. I've been forward. To hear the results. The proposal has 167 eyes and 84 nays. Thereby, the Grand National Assembly has reached a two thirds majority and accepted the changes to the Constitution. Oh. The proposal will be presented to the Supreme Court shortly for the final voting procedure. Assembly roared with all kinds of different reactions by one vote. And we slumped back in our chair. Oh, God. 
I mean, I'm, all, I'm almost tempted to apologise to Peter, but not quite yet. <sighs> Peter, I was stressed, all right? You very rarely see me stressed, Peter, but I was stressed, as stressed as I've ever been in my life. You managed to get a bigger majority than that. Really? Oh, wow, it's good. Because I thought maybe that that was just for dramatic effect, but literally, if you could get more than that in other playthroughs, then we literally did scrape it by the skin of our teeth. Holy hell. Yes! Says Peter. We did it! Okay, do you know what? I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Uh, I'm gonna apologise now. In, a, in my own kind of way. Peter? Thanks for... Thanks for all your hard work. Hard flipping work. Thanks for your hard work, Peter. Thank you. The MPs kept shouting in the hall. Among them I heard Friends Richter's voice. I want to congratulate the members of the Assembly and the President for finally passing changes to our old dusty constitution. I also want to thank the members of the United Swordland Party for working with our party. They've listened to our concerns and added historic changes we've been campaigning for years. This is a historic achievement for the rights of the Bluedish people. I hereby invite the Supreme Court to do the right thing by not ignoring the decision of the Grand National Assembly that was elected by the Swordish people. Loud applause came from the piffjib seats. Suddenly, I noticed Tarquin Sol rising slowly from his seat at the back. He seemed to be struggling and used his cane for help. This, this almost reminds me of the scene from, uh, what's the, what's the program called? What's the program called? Um, the scene from, uh, Game of Thrones, the new uh, House of the Dragon, when the king walks in on it with his stick. He'd been ousted, you know, and then he came in, that epic scene. This kind of reminds me of that a little bit. You know, this, this figurehead, cane in hand, centre stage, I've been looking at him, him hobbling down the assembly. He stood and gazed around the hall as all of the members of the Grand National Assembly went silent. <laughs> Call out to him. Hey up, Sol, me old chum, how you doing? What brings you here today, off your little island? <laughs> Keep watching him. He walked out the exit as two of his guards held the doors for him. Not making a spectacle? Making a scene? Thank God he didn't do anything. Perhaps he's already done what he came to do. In any case, the proposal has passed the Assembly, but now we have to think about the Supreme Court. <clears throat> yes. Ordinarily, Peter, I'd say you're quite correct. But given the past couple of days I've been through, let's just enjoy this victory for now. Sure. Speaking of which, how about a celebratory drink? Yeah, Peter. Let's do it. That's my man. Oh, Grand National Assembly achievement. We left the hall together to grab a drink at the palace. We waited for Sergei by the entrance. Holy flipping cow. I'm not going to look at the newspapers. I'm not going to look at anything after that. Holy cow. Right then, folks. At the one minute past 11. Went, in into bit, went a little bit into overtime there. But hey, that was that was cool. This game, I've, I've, this, I've really enjoyed this game. I've really enjoyed it. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, but there's obviously there is more work to do. We've got to get it through the Grand... We've got to get it through the Supreme Court. So uh, Nia, 
Bifton will be giving Neera a call very shortly, seeing what she's doing with uh, the, the, the fellow justices. Um, whatever else is going to crop up between now and the end. We've definitely got some issues going on with the party. Um, clearly, by the number of votes, uh, some of the people that were supposed to vote yes clearly had a change of heart. Um, so, yeah, there's more work to be done. Probably a lot. And Rumberg are not done with either. So, still lots to do. But for now, as I said to Peter, let's just enjoy this victory. Because, hey, it was well earned, I think. Well earned. Hey, if anybody's got any aspirations to be in politics, you know, I won't bother. Have you seen, have you seen this? Don't put yourself through it. Forget it. Don't bother. No. Nah. <laughs> anyway, folks, that ends uh, uh, what has been uh, a pretty decent week, I think. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. We continue onwards. Tomorrow we shall be returning to uh, to Baldur's Gate 3. Volpus is dusting off his robes and we're getting back on the trail. So uh, yeah, we're starting, we'll be starting at 7, finishing at 11, 4 hours like I used to do when I was a younger person, because uh, uh, I want to be in. I want to be, yeah, get back into Baldur's Gate three now. So uh, hopefully you can join me for that. But otherwise, enjoy the rest of your evenings uh, or your afternoons, depending on where you are. And uh, yeah, have a good week ahead. I am going to go downstairs now and decide what I'm having. I think I'm going to have a cup of tea with uh, all those lovely biscuits, because. I actually feel like I've had to pass the constitution for real. I'm, I'm, I'm stressed. So anyway, I'll go on, folks. Thanks for watching, and until next time, see you soon.